Good evening, you're watching the news on Croatian television. A two-day EU summit on migration, security and defense is underway in Brussels. Leaders are demanding a more comprehensive approach to the migration crisis and the importance of effective control at the EU's external borders. Other key issues on the agenda are the reforming of the Eurozone and the possibility of opening EU accession negotiations with Macedonia and Albania next year. Prior to the main summit, the Prime Minister, as usual, attended a meeting of the European People's Party, the largest bloc in the European Parliament, of which the HDZ is a member. The theme, of course, focused on the migration crisis. I clearly stated Croatia's position, which supports the implementation of the second phase of the agreement with Turkey. This includes the financial obligations from the EU and the readiness to provide even more money for the Fund for African countries. This will strengthen the ability to solve the migration problem outside the EU, which is the most important thing right now. Stronger controls on the EU's external borders are crucial for Croatia. As long as the external borders are well protected, then illegal migration through our territory will be less and less. A security conference was held in Zagreb on Thursday, organized by the Association of Cities and the Ministry of the Interior. The emphasis of the conference was on border security, the fight against terrorism and security issues during the peak tourist season. The conference also announced the allocation of 100 million euros of EU funds for security purposes. In this way, we are trying to present to our cities and municipalities in a timely fashion this information, so that they can prepare projects and apply for these funds on time, and ensure the future security of our cities. A 25-year-old British national has been arrested as the main suspect in the murder of a 26-year-old fellow British national killed in the early hours of Wednesday morning on the island of Pag. Two other people, also from Great Britain, were injured in the attack. By around 6 p.m. yesterday, police had identified the person suspected of committing the crime. The relevant information had been sent to all police stations, and this morning the suspect was arrested at the Split International Airport. The crisis within the largest opposition party, the SDP, continues, as more prominent party members are demanding the incumbent party chairman, Davor Bernadic, to step down. MP Ranko Ostlic, the interior minister during the Zoran Milanovic government, resigned today in protest over the policies of the current SDP leadership. The most important thing for me at this moment is that Davor Bernadic should do the right thing and resign from his post as party president. I consider these events which have unfolded to be the first step towards a deep and serious discussion within the party. But I repeat, this must be done without pressure, accusations or blackmail. The Citizens' Initiative, aiming to repeal the Istanbul Convention through referendum, has moved one step closer to their goal, after the Parliamentary Committee on the Constitution, Standing Orders and Political System requested the government to verify the number and legality of signatures they collected last month. We also call on the government to verify whether the signatures were collected according to the law on referendums, as well as according to the norms and practices of local self-government. Taking a quick look at sports, at the World Cup in Russia, Croatia continues to prepare for its round of 16 showdown against Denmark. The team travels to Nizhny Novgorod on Friday morning ahead of the knockout game on Sunday. The opening kickoff is at 8 p.m. local time. I think the Danes have proven themselves with their play of late. They have not lost a game in their last 18 matches. They are a very strong team and they've got good players. Eriksson is really good. It'll definitely be a tough game. Seriously, they're undefeated in their last 18 games. Meanwhile, Danish coach Uge Horede said his team was up to the challenge. We've got a good team that can match up well with Croatia. I think my players can handle the task well. All we have to do is get out on the field and prove it. And at the Mediterranean Games underway in Tarragona, Spain, Croatian shot putter Stipe Junic won the silver medal with a throw of 20.21 meters, coming 22 centimeters shy of the gold medal won by Hamza Alic from Bosnia and Herzegovina.
The forecast for tomorrow calls for changeable weather in the interior with increased cloud cover and isolated showers and more intense rainstorms in the afternoon. The Adriatic coast will see more sunshine, but also with a chance of isolated showers, especially in the far north and far south. A northeasterly wind along the coast in the morning will switch to a northwesterly and northerly after midday. Northwesterly winds will be strong in the open seas. Morning lows of 12 to 17 degrees in the interior and from 16 to 21 on the coast will give way to highs of 23 to 28 degrees Celsius and slightly lower in higher elevations. And looking ahead, more heavy clouds are in the forecast for Saturday around the continent, increasing the chance of rain and thunderstorms. On Sunday, storms are most likely in higher elevations and the Dalmatian hinterland. Despite a northerly and northwesterly wind, temperatures are expected to climb. The coast will be warmer and sunnier, with a chance of isolated showers in places. A northwesterly and northerly wind on Saturday will switch to a strong northeasterly wind overnight into Sunday, with gale force gusts in places. And that brings us to the end of our program. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow night.